Okay, let's take a look at the method of washers, which as you'll see is actually just a variation on the method of disks. So if you haven't done it yet, I would recommend going back and looking at the method of disk video, and it'll make this one be a little bit clearer. But to start with, let's do the following. Let's start by looking at a, uh, basically a method of disk problem. And what it would look like is this. We'll use the same one that we used in the last video. Let's pretend that we want to make a solid cannon shell, and we will do that by doing the following. We'll take uh, a single function, and up here that function would be uh, f of x. So starting with this, this function right here is going to be f of x. So if you start with a single function, as you saw in the method of disk, roll it around the axis, and it will sweep out a volume, and that volume will be uh, the volume of the cannon shell that we're looking for. Now we broke it down into individual disks within this, so let's stick a disk in there. Uh, if you actually did your disk, a single disk would look like this. Now just a reminder, uh, the disk has a radius. The radius would be this uh, height right here, so going from here to here. And that is the radius, which would be f of x. Now the thickness of the disk is right here, that would be <coughs> dx. So you have the radius and the thickness of a disk. So let's scoot that uh, disk out to the side and we'll take a look at it here. So let's take this disk and move it over here where we can keep it separate. So we'll move it from here over to here. So that is a single disk. Now again, just a reminder um, for this disk, uh, the volume of this disk is just the area of the base times the height, and as we showed in the previous video, that will turn into pi times, and the radius is f of x squared. So that's just the radius of pi r squared or pi times f of x squared. But remember, the thickness of the disk is dx, so the height would be dx. And what this does, <clears throat> this gives you the volume of this solid disk. So that will allow you to calculate the entire volume. If you took the integral of that, you'd have the volume of the entire cannon shell. But now let's do this. Let's put a second function in there. And suppose we had this, a cannon shell that has a hole in the middle of it. So what it would look like would be this. Um, if you did that, uh, Let's suppose we started with a cannon shell, added a second function, which basically drills a hole in the middle of it. Now, if you did that, what you would have would be this. This part up in here is going to be solid. We'll make it be kind of green where you can see it. So this part in here is going to be solid metal. This part down here will also be solid metal. And the part in the middle is going to be a hole. And just to kind of be consistent, let's pretend that this one was g of x. So this is going to be some function g of x. Now what we'll do if you do that, here's what the effect is. That's like coming in here and you will have another disk right here. So we'll put that in here and you can kind of pretend that if you cut it out. Uh, so you have a large black disk then you've got a smaller disk in between. So what that's going to actually look like if you went to the outside here would be this. It would be like taking it and putting a, another disk right into this one. So let's do that. So it looks like this. Now again, let's take this disk and move it off to the side. So we'll take this disk and scoot it out to here. Like I want to leave a copy of it in there, so we'll do this. We'll go from here and move it out to here. So what that will leave you with would be the following. You're going to have, uh, this will now be a new disk out here, and this thing will actually look something like this. So what happens is you started with a big disk, this is the f of x disk, and you pulled out a g of x, so this would be the g of x disk over here, so this is going to be g of x. Now what that does, if you take a big disk and pull a small disk out of it, the volume of this small disk would just be the following. It would be uh, pi times g of x squared dx. So this is the volume of the big solid disk. This is the volume of the small disk. Now what's left over is this little part up in here is what's called the washer. So this would be the washer.
<clears throat> and it's called a washer because it literally looks like a flat washer from down the hardware store. So if you wanted to find the volume of this washer, all it is, it's the volume of this big disk minus the volume of this small disk. So what you can do is come down into here and make it be the following. It would be the volume of the washer would be equal to the volume of the big disk minus the volume of the small disk. Now this is for a single disk. If you wanted to add up all the disks to get the total volume, you would just take the integral of this thing right here. And you would go from sum A right here to sum B right here. And so it would be the integral from A to B of this thing. But you can clean it up just a little bit by doing the following. Uh, let's make this be the integral of from A to B now, both of these have a pi, so you can go ahead and factor out pi. Both of these have a dx, so you can factor out a dx. And then what's left over in the middle would be the following. All you've got is this f of x squared minus this g of x squared dx. So what this gives you, this gives you the formula for the volume, uh, called the volume of washers, or the method of washers, uh, for, uh, like instead of a solid cannon shell, now you've got a cannon shell with a hole in the middle of it. So this will be the final volume, and the formula looks like this. Now what most people remember it as, I think I'll put it in red here, an easier way to remember it is just this. Um, if you look at it vertically, uh, this is the function that's on top vertically. So if you straight up from here, this one's on top, and this one is on the bottom. It's below it. So you've got a top function, and you've got a bottom function. So another way of remembering this would just be the integral from a to b of pi times, and just remember it as the top one squared, minus the bottom one squared. So the bottom squared. And then the whole thing uh, with respect to x. So that's what the formula looks like right there. And it's called the method of washers because, again, you've, uh, it literally looks like you're taking the volume of a single flat washer when you do this. So now with that in mind, let's take a look at uh, a specific problem. Okay, let's go back down. We'll start with this. Suppose we had this, just to give it a specific number. Suppose we wanted to have a, uh, a nine inch long cannon shell. So this thing's going to go from zero out to nine inches. And we wanted to have a hole in the middle of it. So we'll uh, come up with a formula that will make this thing work. So what will happen is this will be up here. This is our f of x. And specifically for this problem, let's just pretend that that's just the square root of x. Then you've got a, that's the top function. You've also got what's called a bottom function, the lower function, and this is going to be g of x. And let's say that that's equal to one half the square root of x. So now the question is, and I think I'll shade it here in green, would be this is the actual metal right here. And this would be metal down here. And the question is, what's the volume of metal to make a nine inch long cannon shell subject to those uh, functions. So first of all, let's take a look at the formulas one more time. Now the formulas look like this. <clears throat> so again, just the integral of pi times the top one minus the bottom one. And we're going to integrate it from 0 to 9. So it's going to go from here uh, to here. So across like this. So from 0 to 9. So really just plug them into the formula and off you go. So the volume of this thing would be equal to the integral of pi times now, f of x is the square root of x, so this is going to be the square root of x squared minus, and then g of x is one-half the square root of x, so that'll be one-half the square root of x squared, and the whole thing dx. So what that's going to look like will be the following. It will be equal to, now again, I've got a pi. I think I'll bring the pi outside the integral. And by the way, I'm going to integrate this from 0 to 9. So from x equals 0 to x equals 9. 
So this would be pi. Um, now, first of all, we'll do the following. This would be from 0 to 9. Now, on this one, when you square them, the square and the square root cancel out, which just leave you with an x right here. Then you've got minus, and over here, you're going to square the 1 half, and you're going to square this. Well, when you square the 1 half, you would get 1 fourth. And when you square these two, uh, the 2 and the square root cancel out, and it just leaves you with this. So this turns into a fairly simple integral, so it'll turn into that right there. So that would be pi times the integral from 0 to 9. Now, 4 fourths x minus 1 fourth x would give you 3 fourths x. So this would be 3 fourths of x dx. Um, and what that will give you would be pi, um, and we'll find the antiderivative of that, which would be 3 fourths of x squared divided by 2 evaluated from 0 up to 9. So now it's just a matter of solving that. So you've got pi, and we'll go ahead and plug in the 9. So this would be 3 fourths of 9 squared divided by 2, and then actually minus 0. So that's going to give you uh, 9 squared would be 81 times 3 would be 243 pi, 43 pi, divided by 8. Now what this would be, this would be the exact volume. If you wanted the exact answer, that's what it's going to be. So that's going to be the exact answer. Now, if you were okay with just an approximate decimal answer, if you stuck that on a calculator, it would turn out to be 95.5. Four, two, and just put some units on this. Uh, we'll assume that we went from zero inches out to nine inches. So we'll do this entire problem in inches. So what this would be would be cubic inches of material. So again, just to kind of back up to the beginning of the problem. Um, if you had a nine inch long cannon shell with a hole in the middle of it and wanted to know how much metal would it take to make it, that's what you'd do right there. So just start with an f of x and a g of x, uh, and then just put them into this formula. And just remember, really, it's just the integral of the top one squared minus the bottom one squared. And when you run through the integration, it'll turn out to be that. So there's a first example of uh, integration finding volumes for evolution using what's called the method of washers.